Hello everyone. One day, two men bumped into each other on a crowded street and both fell to the ground. One apologized and said to the other, Please tell me, are you me or am I you? I know I am me, the other man replied. But as for you, you must be stupid to ask such a question. Oh, I am not stupid, said the man. It is just that we look similar and when we bumped into each other and fell, I thought we might have got mixed up in the fall. Friends, over 2000 years ago, there was some confusion among people about John the Baptist and Jesus. They both lived in the same time. John was the forerunner of Jesus and a preacher of messianic hope. He was not an ordinary preacher. He was fearless, assertive and confident in his preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. So many people came and received baptism from John at the river Jordan. In fact, some people, after seeing his courage and character, thought that he was the Messiah, whom they had been waiting for so many years. But John told them clearly that he was not the Messiah, and he was sent only to baptize people and prepare the way for the Lord. In today's text, we read that from the prison, John sent his disciples to Jesus with this question. Are you the one who is to come or should we look for another? Are you the one who is to come or should we look for another? Why did John send his disciples to ask Jesus if he was the expected one? There are two views concerning John's inquiry. Some think that John sent his disciples to ask Jesus for his own satisfaction. John had proclaimed that the Messiah would be greater than him and that he would be divine in nature. He had also declared God's impending retribution the coming of the one who would baptize people not with water but with the Holy Spirit and fire, who would cut down every tree that does not bear good fruit and throw into the fire. But instead, Jesus seemed to content himself with preaching, healing and driving out demons and allow evil and suffering. For instance, John was imprisoned because he had preached against King Herod who had married his brother's wife, and there was no deliverance in sight. Therefore, some believe that while in prison, John probably wondered if Jesus really was the Messiah, and so he sent his disciples to ask Jesus. Others regard John as asking a natural question. They think that it was a question of clarification, not a question of doubt. John wanted his disciples to find out for themselves if Jesus was the Messiah. Friends, whatever motive prompted John to ask this question, Jesus, to prove that he is the one, did not give them a direct yes and no answer, but asked John's disciples to report to John what they saw and what they heard. Jesus did cure the sick and the lame as evidence to prove that he was the expected Messiah. Finally, Jesus ended his personal message to John by saying, Blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. In other words, Jesus exhorted John not to allow himself to be offended because he was in prison. Friends, what is the message for us? I believe it was not to settle his doubts that John wanted his disciples to ask Jesus if he was the truly the Messiah, but rather to help put away doubts and uncertainties of his followers. However, John's question really a question asked by people of every age. When we pray, we often expect God to act immediately on our behalf and do our will. We want him to eliminate all evil and suffering in the world and make our lives easy. But often times we feel our God appears to be powerless. Instead of removing our pain, God wants us to be patient and be faithful to him. We want God to show his power and punish our enemies, but he wants us to love our enemies, 
Bless those who curse us and do good to those who hate us. So when God does not act as we wish and when our faith in God is shaken, we tend to ask, is Jesus the one who can redeem us or should we look for another? Friends, as we prepare to celebrate the birth of our Lord, first of all, we are reminded today that Jesus himself was and is the Messiah. And there is no other but him who can alone save us, forgive us, heal us and change us. Second, we are called upon to be open to hear and to understand the message and see and believe the wonders of Jesus in our midst and truly recognize and proclaim him as our Savior. Third, we are urged not to be angry with God because of injustice or the suffering in our life. Instead, offer up all the pain, despair, worry, fear and struggle to God. And He will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. Amen. God bless you.